Jaya Ha Shiva Rajaya here from VitalCoaching.com. We are talking right now in this video about conflict resolution. Uh, the idea is to solve your micro conflicts, whatever you have going on in your life that creates tension with other human beings or with organizations or with a country. Any form of conflict that you might have in your life, the idea is to turn that into love and harmony. So I'm going to give you a little bit of motivation here, a few tips. The first thing that we have to understand is that conflicts and friction are um, wasting a whole lot of time and energy in our lives and on a global scale. Imagine what would happen if suddenly we could drop armies and all the energy and money, and time, and human skills that are invested into creating weapons to destroy each other. Imagine that for a second, in the political arena, instead of having two candidates fighting with each other, they would collaborate and build a better world, or a better country, or a better town together. So this idea of collaboration you know, it's a powerful upgrade in our human consciousness that we need to bring and activate into our lives. So when we think of conflict in your own life, for instance, you think of conflict and you might think that the problem is out there in some war that is going on far away from where you live. But the truth is that I believe the place where we need to solve it first is in ourselves and in our direct relationship with the people around us. So if you are in a relationship, for instance, if you are in a partnership or you have been in the past, think about the amount of energy that you might be investing into solving or managing conflict or tension with your partner. Okay, this is a very good place to start, a very good experimental arena where you can develop new communication tools and find ways of solving the micro conflicts that might be happening on a daily basis within the context of your relationship or your friendships or your family life. You know, you might have a, a mother or a father or a sibling with who you have some deep, profound, ongoing uh, rivalry or conflict or disagreement going on. And that keeps coming up during your life, sometimes for an extended period of time. Some, uh, sometimes that conflict might be sustained there for years and years just because it doesn't find resolution. And so the amount of energy that is invested in, into that is massive. So. The hint that I want to give you here, the first hint, is that the core pattern that I believe creates, you know, conflict and rivalry is the power of control. So when somebody's trying to control your life or you're trying to control somebody else's life, this is the place where friction arises. Think about global conflicts. Think about um, conflicts between nations. You know, what is happening right there? It's one country trying to control another country. If that first country was not invading the second country, there would be no conflict. Everything and everybody would be in harmony. They would be like, I respect your land, I respect your assets, your assets, I respect your beliefs, and I'm not here to try to control what you think or what you do or how you treat your land. You see, that solves the conflict instantly. The place where the conflict arises is when there is an urge to control what's happening out there. And this combined with aggressive energy, you know, with warrior energy that is activated in the sense of attacking or aggressing. But the core, the core thing is that there is something happening out there and we want to gain some form of control over that. And so if you bring that within the micro conflicts that you might be facing in your romantic relationship, for instance, think about where is the moment where conflict arises. It's the moment where you are trying to control the other person, their beliefs, their actions, what they do with their body or not. 
their choices, their words, their attitudes. It's all about control. And so this, this conflict is going to arise when it's either you trying to control them or them trying to control you. So you feel an invasion. If you are the one being controlled, you feel an invasion of your space. And so there is a very simple solution for that. And it comes from either the person who is being the victim of this attack or this aggression, aggression or this invasion, or if you are the perpetrator of that attack or that invasion of that person's mind of life, it's to release control or to protect yourself against control. And if somebody is telling you, well, here is the truth, here is what I want you to believe, you might say, I respect your opinion, I hear what you are saying, and I have a different opinion. And if they try to force their opinion on you, you say, again, I respect your opinion, and I am born with the right of self-determination. I am born with the right to make my own choices and choose my own beliefs. So this is the first solution, is to own first your truth and to stand to your truth. And if you are the perpetrator of the controlling impulse, then it's to respect the other person and say, you know what, I realize I have no right to tell you what to do or what to think or how to behave in your life. So the control pattern or the control energy that you might have in your life is being redirected towards yourself. Okay, this is very important. It is that what you are given the right to control is what is yours. Another human being is not your property. You cannot own another person's thoughts and beliefs. So the desire to control those beliefs or the th those thoughts is already a violation of their most basic human right. So I believe that if we get that right as a human race, everything will change on a vast, on a big scale, and on a small scale, on an individual scales, on a, a government or political scale, on a country nationwide, and on a global scale. It's how we are using control and power. This is the key. And so there is another, another element, another powerful element, is the idea or the ability to listen. Again, when it comes to romantic relationships, for instance, if you feel like there is an escalation of conflict happening, the way to de-escalate de -escalate a conflict or a tension or a rivalry or a friction in your relationship is very simple. If your partner is angry with you or triggered with you about something, instead of trying to block their emotion or what they are saying, the simple solution is to listen. Listen to what they have to say. It's very simple. You go like, I'm going to listen and I'm going, not going to, be, to interrupt you. And so imagine how it feels when you're trying to voice something and the person in, in, who, who is supposed to be getting your message is blocking what you have to say. It's extremely frustrating. And so that leads to an escalation. So the simple solution is, I want to hear what you have to say. It looks like there is something that is alive inside of you, a form of frustration or a form of anger, or there is a charge towards me. I don't know where it's coming from. And I want to listen to what you have to say. And so you listen. Just listen. You go like, mm hmm. Okay, so you're angry with me. You are attacking me right now verbally. It's pretty intense. I give you space to voice what you have to say. And so once that channel is expressed and is no longer locked, then that opens the gateway for harmonious communication or solution and the de escalation of the conflict. So if somebody is charged towards you and is angry about something, just Give them space to voice what they have to say. And then when they finish, you know, this is another core technique, you simply repeat what they just told you. So what you are saying is that you are angry with me because the other day I didn't prioritize you. I made a choice that didn't consider you. And what you are saying right now is that this frustrates you, you feel neglected, 
and you feel unseen. You see, I'm just repeating what my partner might have said to me. And in the process of doing that, you are honoring that person's emotions, <laughs> you know, instead of locking them out, instead of, you should not feel like that. I'm doing all that for you, you know. So this is being reactive mode. So if somebody shares something and you enter into a reactive mode, then guess what's going to happen? It's going to create a clash. So instead you go like, I receive. Yeah, I can see your point. I can see why you would be frustrated by that. It makes not all sense to me. And then offering a potential solution. That's the next step. But as you can see, you know, the, the conflict management or the conflict resolution tactics or the conflict de-escalation tactics. And, you know, they are there. The possibilities and the techniques to, to solve these conflicts are there. But the first thing that you have to 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 understand is that it needs to come from a place where you realize the value and you realize the power and the, the impact that it has on your life when you are in a state of harmony and love and respect with your surroundings. Sustaining conflict and sustaining tension with other human beings is exhausting. It creates a lot of stress, especially if that person is really close to you in your field or living together. It's just an ongoing process that really creates lots of tension and the stress accumulates itself. You know, it creates all this chain reaction of uh, biochemicals inside of you, you know, cortisol, adrenaline, you are in tension, you are in defense mode. So it creates all this tension that eventually the stress itself is going to impact on your health. It's going to impact on all aspects of your life. On top of that, you cannot direct all this energy that you're investing into the conflict into creative outlets. And so it's like you are in war zone or in, in conflict zone uh, all the time. So this is why I want to give you a few hints here to look at the conflicts that are alive in your life right now. Do you have any intention, any ongoing uh, challenge or friction with somebody in your life and do something about it. Solve it. Okay. It's a very, very important aspect of your life. Bring back harmony and love. Guess what? I love you. I'll see you soon.